welcome to our virtual eighth grade promotion. Parents, thank you for your continued support of Charlotte Christian. I know that over these past few weeks, some of you have had to step in and help with classes and subject matters that may have been out of your comfort zone. I love the Charlotte Christian community, and I wish we were together to celebrate this wonderful group of young ladies and gentlemen. I am grateful for your family's continued partnership with our school, even when classes looked quite different than they did in August. Students, thank you for how well you have transitioned to online classes. I am proud of the way you finished your middle school years. 10 years ago, 14 of you began your journey in junior kindergarten, and that was also my first year at Charlotte Christian as well. As your class continues to grow, mature, and develop, I hope that you grow closer to each other, but more importantly, closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The next few years will be exciting and filled with opportunities, triumphs, and most likely a few failures, and that is okay. The Bible never promises a perfect or trouble-free life. Rather, God promises that he will always be with us. As you head into the summer and then upper school, that is my simple prayer for you. Remember, God loves you and he is always with you. It is my privilege now to introduce a member of our Board of Trustees and a parent of an eighth grader, Mr. Marty White, who will lead us in our invocation. You are the Charlotte Christian School Class of 2024. Congratulations on your promotion from middle school. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Charlotte Christian School, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this most unique eighth grade promotion ceremony. We'll start it with prayer, and if you'll bow with me. Heavenly Father, you have taught that each of us are fearfully and wonderfully made. Today we thank you for each of these eighth graders that you have made in your image. We thank you for their achievements, their accomplishments, and we celebrate today their promotion from middle school. We ask for your continuing blessings and mercies upon them as they move on to upper school in a new and exciting phase of their lives. We thank you for the parents of these teenagers for their sacrifice and commitment to train up their children in the way they should go. And we thank you for Charlotte Christian School for providing a safe environment for our children and for the opportunity to provide them with a Christian education. We especially thank you for each of the teachers who have touched the lives of these teenagers over the last eight, nine, and even 10 years. As a result of their efforts, each of these teenagers are well on their way to impacting our culture for Christ. In your son's name we pray, amen. Hello, Charlotte Christian Middle School. It is my privilege as the middle school's principal teacher to deliver your last middle school lesson before you are promoted to the ninth grade. And while this is not the ceremony we had planned and hoped for, we are blessed that we have the means to celebrate you, to lift you up, and to send you with our love and our blessing in these unique times. And speaking of sending you with our blessing, that's what today's lesson is all about. When I think of what Jesus would have said to a group who was being promoted or graduating, I feel like I get a picture of that in his instructions to the disciples before he sent them into ministry. We find those instructions in Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, where it reads, One day Jesus called together his twelve disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. Don't take a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. I've always been struck by how little he said they should take with them until recently, when I read an article about people who overpack. One source said that over 62% of us pack too much when traveling. I know I always take too much, as if I will need to replace my outfit three to four times a day. The article went on to say that one reason we overpack is that we usually wait until the last minute. The other reason is that we worry that we won't have what we need, so we take too much. In doing so, we wind up with too much to carry, and we are limited in the new things that we can acquire because we don't have room. I believe Jesus was telling his disciples that they had everything they needed to heal those in need to spread the gospel. That the extra would weigh them down and make it harder to minister effectively. That their time with him was enough. That who they became in their time with him made them enough. And that is the blessing I speak over you, eighth grade, as I send you 
to ninth grade, that you would realize that you are enough and that you realize that your time in middle school has helped to prepare you to be enough. Your parents have invested in your development by sending you to Charlotte Christian School. With your teachers, directors, and coaches, you have built knowledge and understanding of yourself in this world. Through our spiritual life programming, you have learned who you are in Christ and how God's word is sufficient for direction in your life. You are a talented, fun-loving, friendly, and genuine class of students. Don't ever lose that. I have no doubt you are prepared for what God has for you next. Yes, you are enough. Don't let the world tell you otherwise, and it will try almost constantly. You have enough to do what God is calling you to do now, like the disciples, to heal, to spread the gospel, and to love others well. And if you keep your hand in his hand and follow his instruction, you will always have enough, you will always be enough. The blessing I speak over you as we send you in to your future is that you would always have the confidence of knowing that in Christ and with Christ, you will always have enough and you will always be enough. And now, as we recognize the members of the class of 2024, I've asked your advisors to briefly share the blessing they would like to speak over you as we send you forth as Christ did with the disciples. God bless you. Hi guys, I have enjoyed having you in advisory this year and I will miss starting our mornings together in the dining hall. Thomas, Sean, Catherine, Israel, Avery Manry, Sydney, Avery Seahorn, Pierce, Jeffrey, and Tyler. My prayer for you comes from a song that's been encouraging to me the last couple months of preparing to become a mom. I pray that it also encourages you as you begin a new season of life in upper school. It is called The Blessing and it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you grace. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. As you move on to upper school, I pray that God will bless you in all of your new experiences. I encourage you to try new things and embrace all of the memories that you will make. I love you all and will miss you in middle school. Please come back and visit. It has been my pleasure to be your advisor this year. Rachel, Ruthie, Avery, Brittany, Whitney, Anne, Thomas Leinberger, Thomas McNally, Leo, Clara, Gavin, Kennedy, Oliver, Cameron, and Zach. I have missed our mornings together, talking, table golf, homework help, food Fridays, and so much more. I pray that God will grant you favor and use you as you head to upper school. Remember this scripture from Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. When we delight in God and all His ways, He will give us the desires of our heart. God takes pleasure in giving to His children good things. Each of you has a deep desire to be something, do something, or make something special happen. If you delight in God, whatever your desire is, in God's will, He will grant it. May God bless you all. Hello, Plettner Advisory. It's been my pleasure to be your advisor this year. Sophia, Ryan, Grace, Aiden, Max, Sydney, Connor, Caroline, Parrish, and Kate. I've missed our mornings together, chatting, our attempts at Food Friday, dancing, and so much more. As you head into upper school, I pray you will remember this truth that will never fail you. This can be found in Ephesians 3.20. He is able to do immeasurably more 
and all we can ask or imagine according to His power at work within us. When we face life circumstances knowing that the Lord is the one who is working in and through us and the task, dream, or perhaps burden rests on His strength, not our own, we will never be disappointed. I speak from tried and tested life experience with this and pray this same blessing upon you. Early on, you guys took two of my meter sticks, taped them together, wrote best advisory ever, and signed your names on it. I thought that was a bold statement having only spent two weeks together, but I'm here to say you lived up to the title you gave yourself. EJ, Sarah Grace, Jacob, Abby, Emily, Graydon, Keith, Maddie, Kendall, Kate, Luke, Nick, Henry and Bryce. As you move into upper school, my desire is that you continue to grow closer to Jesus and carry the joy that you have right now. In the same way Paul prayed for the church in Rome to allow the God of hope to fill them with joy and peace, my prayer for you all is that the God of hope will fill you with his joy and his peace. Thank you for being my greatest advisory. Hello Stamps Advisory. Didn't God make a beautiful day? I am so happy to celebrate today with you. I just wish that it was in person. At this time, I would like to recognize Ansley Battle, Chloe Boyd, Graham Cash, Aza Collins, Daniel Crocker, Aiden Jones, Michael Cobway, Cross Killen, Issa Long, Sophia Olivetto, Sydney Grace Champ, Luca Vicino, Anna Winstall, and Laura Woodley. Even though all 14 of you have different and distinct and wonderful personalities, when you were all put together in this advisory, you all got along. So my words of encouragement to you as you move on to high school is to be yourself. You're gonna be judged no matter what. Just be yourself. See yourself as God sees you. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Students, thank you for blessing me this year. To Karsten, Carson, Sophia, Alex, Dom, Bradley, Kennedy, Evan, Rashi, Will, Ella, Jaden, and Noah. This is your advisory blessing. We gathered at a table round. Each morning heard the slapping sound of hands clapped yelling, hey, 55, a sound to wake the sleepy alive. You read and studied and sang and grew your faith stretched out by the God you knew. Your classes with friends so close by, you could hear their thoughts as they flew by. But now you sit far apart, a distance that spans a lonely heart. At a time where you may be so confused, your soul feeling it has lost all there is to lose. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Who would have thought I'd be alone? I was supposed to finish eighth grade strong. I was supposed to have DC pics cluttering my phone. But to my advisory table, this is not where your story ends. Yes, your story has a weird chapter, but you have an entire life to go get after. The truth of it is, this too shall pass, and you will one day attend a class with all your friends and teachers and such, with math and PE and history and lunch. One day you'll look back at this and maybe you'll joke about checking into advisory eight seconds after you woke. But until that day, I bless you all, and my prayer for you is this, that when you look back on this year, your thoughts don't start with what you missed. Instead, look at what you had, the most precious commodity you can find. Not gold or silver or Bitcoin, but the Lord gave you some time. Time to think, time to pray, time to be at rest, time to ponder in a quiet space what the Lord has for you next. We might never have forevermore a time like we just had to think and play and chill and love, bike rides with your mom, playing Fortnite with your dad. So my prayer and blessing as you go from eighth grade into nine, is that you thank the Lord for stopping the world to give you a little time. 
Use it wisely, use it well, and for heaven's sakes, use it all. Because when that time is finally up, I'll see you in the fall. To my atrium advisory, it was a joy having you all in the morning to start my day. You all helped each other study for upcoming tests, tried to awkwardly sleep on the benches to get that extra minute of sleep before class, laughed at my singing, scurried to lockers to get work you forgot for class, begged Mrs. Preston's advisory for donuts because you all forgot to bring food for Food Friday, laughed at memes on the internet, stared at the wall because you were still asleep, and most importantly, witnessed the greatest race on earth when Robbie raced the sixth grader in the atrium and lost twice, sliding through Jackson's legs because he tripped. It was fun and I enjoyed it dearly. Cameron Bailey, Drew Boyd, Jacob Brown, Sarah Davis, Enzo Melio, Maddie Montgomery, Jackson Payne, Robbie Robinson, Sierra Rogers, Taylor Suarez, Jackson Turner, JD Urban, Trey Wilfong, Taylor Young. My prayer and hope for you all comes from John 15, 5, which says, I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You were here at CCS this year because God wanted you to be here. He sovereignly orchestrated it. So whether you have only been here for one year or have been here ever since JK, God has been training you to take the good news of the gospel out into a dark world that so desperately needs the light of Christ. Your impact, though, will only be as effective as how close you position yourself to Christ. Get up every day, pray, present your requests to the Lord, dig into God's word daily, and seek the lost. No matter where you are next year, I love you all and pray that God uses each of you in big ways for the kingdom of God. Class of 2024, we made it. Our middle school years have ended and high school is waiting for us just around this quarantine. When I look back to what we've done this year, I see many great things such as serving at Beds for Kids and conquering the science fair. Whether it be in school or online, this eighth grade year has been everything I imagined and more. I hope that you too also left this year proud of what you've accomplished. Because you should be. Even if it came to staying up until midnight to finish a project, we got it done. From debates and sponsors in social studies to Mr. Brady's stories, our teachers have truly shaped us into the students that we are today. I couldn't be more grateful to each and every one of you for your patience and selflessness towards us all. Lastly, I want to encourage you to go into freshman year with a clear and open mind. While we may not know what lies ahead, trust that God will lead you through it all. I pray that your relationship with Christ strengthens over these next few years and continues to grow then on. If nothing else, lean on your faith in Christ for guidance and you will not be disappointed. I want to leave you with Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Remember that your faith is a transformative thing that roots you in Christ. Hold that dear to your heart and show the salvation you've been given to others through your actions. Hello, I am Paris Robinson and I wanted to say congratulations to our eighth grade class on their promotion to Everton. This is not the way any of us expected to end the year. These final few weeks were supposed to be filled with the finale of spring sports, goodbyes in the hall, and the end of your exams. Well, I wasn't really missing that one, but we adapted to the changes and made this crazy year our own. How did we do it? And how are we going to confidently face the challenges of high school? Our theme verse for this year provided the guidance. In 1 Corinthians 13.13, 13, we learn that faith, hope, and love abide, but the greatest of these is love. Faith. As we walked each day, we had faith in our God, who has a plan for us. A plan for a future and a hope. We had faith that our teachers have prepared us and we seamlessly transition from classroom to online learning through their hard work. Hope. It's who we have our hope in, our God, who will never leave us or forsake us, that gives us the confidence to move forward to high school. I can't wait for the first Friday night game. Jake Turner will be amazing, 
and the later start time will give us an extra 15 minutes of sleep. And finally, love. It's the love and support of our Heavenly Father, families, friends, faculty, and staff that sustained us in the past and will prepare us for the future. It is with faith, hope, and love that we not only survived, we succeeded. We will not forget our first trip to Windy Gap, Beach Days in Wilmington, and Mr. Simon's Tuesday morning meetings. A new building will bring new memories, and I know we are all prepared. Congratulations. Students, congratulations. This is an exciting time to join the Upper School. Great things are happening, and we have even greater things planned for you down the road. Your high school experience will be all about taking advantage of opportunities to grow, to try new things, to get out of your comfort zone and build new relationships. Opportunities do not go away. They just go to someone else. If you will seize those opportunities, you'll be a different person in four years than you are now. You are ready for high school, you've worked hard, and that hard work combined with the time and energy your middle school faculty and staff have poured into you, along with continuously praying for you, has you more than prepared to be successful. Congratulations, and welcome to the Charlotte Christian Upper School. Eighth grade, allow me to add to the long list of people saying congratulations. Uh, it has been an absolute joy and a pleasure to walk alongside you the last three years, watching you grow from sixth grade teaching you in seventh grade and now watching you finish up this year. Again, albeit a different finish to the one that we expected, uh, but God has been in the midst of it. So allow me to pray for you one last time to bless you, uh, and then I'll lead us in our benediction. Let's pray. Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for um, the students that you have brought along on this journey this year. Thank you, Lord, for the families that are represented with these students and thank you for the stories um, that each of those families represent. God, thank you that above all else you are writing a story uh, that involves us and that you are writing a story um, that is uh, bringing blessing uh, upon us. And so Father, I pray that blessing for these eighth graders. I pray that you will bless them and keep them. I pray that you will uh, make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. I pray you turn your face toward them and give them peace. And no matter what the next days, weeks, or months look like, Father, may they find their peace and their satisfaction in you. And so God, we rejoice with them and we bless them as we go on our separate ways, at least for the summer, in Christ's name, amen. Eighth grade, one last time, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God, Micah 6.8.